Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the who's feast. He took the who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that old Grinch even took their last can of who hash. Can. Yes, I did say can. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove. when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small hoo, little Sandy Lou who, who was not more than Two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who got up out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and she said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, <laughs> and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy, Lou, who, went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he'd left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was too small, even for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for other whose mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the trappings, the tags, the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings, 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's he was grinchishly humming. They're finding out now 
<laughs> that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open for a moment or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry. Boo-hoo! Because he took all their Christmas presents. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow, but the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded merry, fairy. It, 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 it couldn't be so, but it was merry, fairy. He stared down at Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes, then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who, down in Whoville, the tall and the small was singing without any presence at all. He he, 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 he hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling, how, how could it be so? It, it came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe, Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And when that happened, and when that happened, well, in Whoville they say, that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, carved the roast beast. Merry Christmas. <laughs> roast beef, right. Why don't we have some cookies? Your brain is full of spiders. You've got garlic in your soul, Mr. Grinch. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole You're a vile one